Ladles and Jelly Spoons, welcome back to Badger Works. Today, this. <laughs> uh, now, this is a base that my daughter made for one of her sculptures. And uh, today we're going to wire it for lights. So, let's get on with it. So, as is usually the case, there is a bit of a story here, so follow me. Um, <laughs> my, let me move this out of the way for a second. Um, my daughter came to me the other day and she said, uh, actually, well, a bit of backstory. My daughter, as some of you are probably aware, is um, into sculpting using um, polymer clays. She's getting rather good at it. And she made a little gadget. Uh, it's basically, it's based on uh, one of the uh, watchers from Horizon Zero Dawn, or the Horizon series, series of games. Um, she's never played it, but she's seen me play it. She's seen her brother play it. And she was quite taken with these like machine animals. And one of them is called Watcher. Uh, and if you're not familiar, it's basically a bipedal robot. Um, and as the name suggests, it's uh, like a, a guardian. And the idea is it follows um, the kind of, I'm not going to go into too much detail, but the kind of the, the herbivorous machines, if you like. And it keeps an eye on them. And she was quite taken with the idea of this. And she made her own version of it, which you'll see a bit later in the video. Um, and so she said uh, she wanted to put lights in it because this thing lights up. So I gave her an LED and put some wire on it. And she uh, made that part of the sculpture. And she said, can you make me a base? So I made this. And this is a little two-part base that I 3D printed. Um, and I, I said, oh, I've made you that base. And she's like, no, 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 it's not, it's not right. She said, I've already got the base. And I was like, what? And that's when she basically showed me this so this is the base that she's made for this thing and I have to say I am really impressed with this um, she's done a really good job on this it's basically it's a piece of uh, tree <laughs> it's basically a slice of, of a, a tree branch or trunk um, that she got I think from Hobbycraft uh, and she's basically put this you know finish on it so you know, all of this stuff is mine, and I've just said to her, you know, you can use it whenever you want. And so this is what she's come up with, and I really like this. I think she's done a really good job of it. Um, there's, there's so much use of, like, you know, different materials and textures and all that kind of stuff, and I think she's done a fantastic job. But this is the base that she's made for this thing. And the idea is that where the cocktail stick is here, that's where, that what is what will pin it to the base, and then she's made a hole in it for the wires to go through. And she wanted something to go under this, now, she didn't tell me that to begin with, but she wanted something to go under this for the batteries and whatnot. So what I've made is, drum roll please, this. Uh, so this is 3D printed uh, on my new uh, printer. And uh, this is another reason why I got the particular printer I did, the Mize RS, because I could print this in one piece. Um, on a smaller printer, you'd probably have to do this in two pieces. So anyway... Um, I did something, well, I like to think it was a bit clever, but it's not, not really, it's fairly basic. But I, uh, as I mentioned in previous videos, I've been learning Fusion 360. And I mentioned a tutorial before uh, from Project Designs Online. And one of the things that they teach you is how to use what's called the canvas function. Um, so how this works is this. What you do is you take your object and you take a photograph of it, as, as square as you can, and then you take a measurement across two points. You can then import that image into Fusion 360, and you basically, the reason you measure this and you take two points is once you've got the picture imported, you take those same two points, you tell Fusion 360 what that distance is, so in this case I measured from basically front to back, um, and it will then scale it to life size. And then using the spline tool, I basically went all the way around it and I got uh, this shape. And that meant that I could make this. Because you'll notice, this is not round. Uh, so this actually follows reasonably well uh, the contours or the shape of the base. Which is something I couldn't do in like Tinkercad or something like that. Um, I've also added a few extra features. So there's these little um, standoffs here. And what they are for is for these screws. So these, this is a 3.5 by 40 millimeter screw. And the idea is you put that through, there's a little chamfer on the bottom as well. 
So you drop that through there, and then that sticks out the top there, and that's what will attach it to the back, to the uh, actual diorama. There's also a little bit here. This is for the battery charger. So that fits in like so, and uh, goes like that. And the idea here, there's a little bit that sticks up a little bit higher, and that stops this from being able to move backwards. So when you plug the cable in, you're not pushing this into the, into the base. Uh, and then also there's another hole there, which is for uh, this rocker switch. So that fits, I'm not gonna put it in there because it's a clicking one, but that basically just snaps in there. Now, the astute among you will have noticed that this is actually textured. Uh, now, because it's going underneath this base, which is obviously natural and has bark on it, I wanted something to kind of fit in with that thing. So I added this texture to it. Now, <laughs> I did this using Blender. Uh, now, Blender is another program that I'm trying to learn how to use with varying degrees of success. Uh, but I did find a tutorial for how to use a stencil to create textures. So I made this in Fusion 360, exported it as an STL, then imported it into Blender, and using the stencil feature, um, I added this texture. Now, again, I, I followed a tutorial on YouTube. I'll, I'll link to that. Unfortunately, I can't remember the name of the channel, but I'll put a link to where I learned. It's only like a five-minute video. It's nothing like one of mine. <laughs> um, but there, so that's what I came up with, and I'm, I'm very pleased with this. Uh, so what we need to do now is basically put some paint on this thing and then wire it for the electronics. So what I'm going to do first is I'm going to give it a coat of or a coat of a couple of different colours. So I'm going to start with this high coat grey primer um, because I find this it gives a really, really good bond. And then after that, I'm going to hit it with white primer and then we'll go on from there. So let me go and put these on and then once they're dry, we'll move on from there. Right, so that's uh, had a chance to dry now. And uh, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna hit it with a coat of this uh, XF57 buff. Right, there we go. So we'll let that dry and then we'll um, go on from there. Now I'm going to go around and uh, add some uh, detail with this uh, XS64 Red Brown. And so what you can see I'm doing there is I'm just doing the top and the bottom um, just to uh, kind of blend it in with the bark of the, uh, of the actual tree itself. Right, and what I'm also doing here is just adding some, uh, just a few little random stripes and blobs and stuff like that, just to, uh, you know, just break it up a little bit. So. Right. Like that, you see. That looks all right, that. Right, and the next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna take this uh, XF78 wooden deck tan and just mist slightly over the whole thing just to kind of unify it all. All right, there we go. And uh, what will happen is as that uh, deck tan dries, it will actually let the darker brown show through a little more as well, but it just kind of blends it all together. So the next thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna hit this with a couple of coats of this um, acrylic lacquer, gloss lacquer, and then uh, we'll go on from there. Right, this has had a chance to dry, so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to put an oil wash on it. So this is um, De La Roni Graduate 
burnt umber. Oh, I can't get the lid off. There we go. So we'll just put a nice dollop of that in there. Get off. And we'll add a drop of uh, this white spirit, which I believe, if I'm not entirely wrong, came from Wilkinson's, but it might not have done. We don't need a huge amount. Now what we're going to do, I'm just going to do a little bit here because it'll be easier to do this off camera, but just basically just like that. You can see why it's easier for me to do it off camera because it's all running down and it's going to go everywhere. So we'll just put it on like that and uh, then we'll dry it out with a hairdryer. So let me put this on then I'll show you what it looks like. Right, so there you can see that's nicely coated and more or less dry. So what I'm gonna do now is uh, I've got some of the same white spirit in this little pot here, and I've just, just dampened the brush very, very lightly and just very lightly go over it like this, just to clean up the kind of high points. So you don't want a lot of thinner on the brush because it will just lift the whole lot right off. So just it's just barely damp. And just go over like that, you see. Just to clean off. The brush is barely touching the surface. And it's just really just to clean off any high spots. And uh, just make sure that the... Um, the paint is in the recesses where we want it. So I'll go around the whole thing like this and then we'll dry it off again and then we'll uh, seal it up. Right so I've dried that off with a hairdryer again and uh, what I've done is I've just given it a quick uh, a quick lick of this uh, matte lacquer just to seal it because um, it basically means you don't have to wait for it to like totally dry before you carry on it's a bit of a cheat but it works um, and what I'm going to do now is I'm going to give it a very very light dry brush with this um, PBO acrylic uh, this is the infamous string like so we're going to hit it with this but we're going to do it really really lightly so all right and like I said just very very lightly Like that, you see, you can barely see it, but it will just pick up the highlights like that. So I'll go around and do the rest of it, and then we'll see what it looks like. Right, there we go, that looks all right, I think. So, um, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to give this another coat of the uh, matte lacquer just to completely seal it. And then we'll let that dry, and then we can move on to the uh, electronics inside. Right, so time to start some soldering. So what we need to do is attach the battery to the charging circuit, and then the charging circuit to the switch, and then everything else. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to try something a bit different. I'm going to use these uh, pin connectors. So these are PCB um, pin connectors. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to try and solder these onto the uh, onto the base so that instead of soldering the wires directly to it I can just oh come on there we go I can um, you know have the have things that you can just plug on and off I think it'll make it a bit life a bit easier putting this together so uh, let's start with this charging circuit so I think we're gonna want that, that way up because that is what these things are actually designed for is to is to do this 
It's a bit more easier if I had my glasses on. Alright, and I've just got a new reel of solder from China, so I'm kind of curious to see how this works. Just trying to find decent solder these days is very difficult. Right, that seems to have got it. Right, there you go, you see. And that way, because I've got the corresponding plug, so I can just plug it straight on. So I'll put the other one on. Alright, there we go. That one is straight, this one isn't. <laughs> Difference, that's like donkey's iron leg. Anyway, never mind. Um, right, now we need to put the battery wires on. Now this battery, I bought a whole bunch of these. Um, and they have three wires, so the black and the red are the positive and negative. And then the, um, the uh, white wire is like a control wire, which we don't need. So I shall remove that. And I'm going to do what I always say I shouldn't do, but I'm going to do it anyway. I'm going to cut the wires with my clippers. When you're doing this, make sure you only cut one wire at a time so you don't short the battery out. All right, get rid of that. And then this white wire we can just get rid of because we don't need it. Strip those. This is where you've got to be careful because you don't want these to touch. All right, now the battery I am going to solder on. So that goes through there. Like that. And the positive goes through there, like that. And there we go. So now, if I plug A USB cable into this, we should see a charging light come on. There we go. Right. So that's that fine for a minute. We can put that to one side. And we need to do the same thing with the switch. Right, these are the uh, the pins for these, or the, the plugs for these connectors. Um, and like so many things, they actually come on this strip and that's so they can be fed through a machine. Um, but uh, obviously I'm not going to be doing that, but I'm going to put this on first so that if I screw it up, I haven't soldered it to the switch. Uh, pliers. Right, so... This is where the fun begins. We need to cut that down a little bit. Right, now I've got to try and do this and do it in front of the camera so you can see what I'm doing. It's fine. Now again, normally you'd use a, there's a, like a proper tool that you can get to do this, which I don't have. So I'm just gonna use a pair of pliers. Like that. Oh, it's popped straight out. Of course it has. That's why you use the proper tool, you see. Now, this is the tricky bit. It's trying to get these things closed up because the trouble is with this is it has to fit inside this little plastic case and if you don't get these ends done properly they won't fit so you have to kind of work it around in a circle so that it crimps up properly if you just if you just like mash it flat it won't fit
so you have to kind of go round it like that so that it crimps up evenly that's got it and so now we should put this in because if, if you look there's a little oh focus there's a little square bit right there where my fingernail is and there's a little plastic tab on the top of here and when you pop that in there it should click into place like that you see and that holds it and then if you want to get it out again you just lift up that little plastic tab and pop it out but that should now connect onto there like that you see so we'll solder the other end to the switch So that is that. So now we need to make cut another piece to go to the gadget. So I'm going to solder another bit onto the end of onto the other side of this switch and then make up a, a wire for the positive and then I'll show you how we're going to put all this together. Right, uh, so my daughter's here. Hello Katie. Hola Katie. She's just come back from Spain, so anyway. What was the most important phrase you had to learn? Con queso. Con queso, with cheese. And would that phrase have come in handy? Probably. Because what didn't you get while you were there? Cheese ice cream. There you go, you see. Well, I did, and it tasted quite nice, actually. Anyway, um, so just on this, I've sprayed the bottom of this black just because I could, and I've added these, um, oh God, I don't know if you can actually see that. These are little like rubber little, little rubber feet. Uh, they're just like, they come on sheets of 100, and you just stick them on, and they come with 3M glue, which is nice, so they shouldn't come off. Uh, so what we're going to do now is put all this stuff in here. So I'm going to use one of these double-sided pads to hold the battery down or the the, uh, the charging circuit down so I'll just stick that on there like that and then go through the fun of trying to get the paper off of it because they never want to come off yes your point did you see it was a butterfly well there's probably quite a few out there it's that time of the year Okay, so this goes on, that is not a pigeon, that's a rook. Mm. Uh, so we pop that in there like that, and then we stick that down like that, make sure the wires are not. And then we put all of it together and realise that the wires don't work. No, I've already tested it, thank you. And I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to take another one of these and stick that battery down. Good idea. So it's not rattling about in there. So we'll just... Yeah, remember not to throw it in the bin. What? What happens if you do throw it in the bin? Throw what in the bin? The battery. Well, you don't throw them in the bin, you recycle them. But what happens if you did throw them in the bin? Well, then you're a twit. So we'll just stick that down like that. It's wonky. It's not straight. I don't care. I it's, do. Well, it's, you're never going to see it again, so it doesn't really matter, does it? Right, well, I know it's there and it's going to annoy you me. Well, you annoy me. The rest so of my life. There you go, again. Right, and then we pop this in here and hope it actually fits. Oh, it it's do. a little switch. All right, just get in there. That goes in like that. Make sure that's switched off. Then we take Good this idea. wire and we and pop it around it onto the negative. And like you put the positive. And then the positive one goes on to there, like that. And now, this is where the fun starts. Because what we've got to do, oh, bits. See, this is the trouble with these little cheap double sided pads, is you end up with most of the stuff stuck to your fingers. Oh well. If I could find some decent ones, I'd actually prefer to get like 3M ones. But anyway, um, now. We've got to think about putting this on. So which which is the front? Which is the front? So this is this is the front, right? Okay. No, 
this way. Yeah, that's what I said. This is the front. It doesn't really matter, yeah. but you see, what I've got to do now is I've got to thread the wires up through here. This hole that you conveniently put in it. Well done. Yeah, see? Well, you are getting there. Oh, except we might have to make that hole a bit bigger. Hmm. What did you drill that hole with? A drill. <laughs> what do you think I drilled that hole I, with? I shudder to think. Um, no, right, I made I'm, sure that those wires could fit through, not these ones. Yeah, I know, but uh, I might have to just wall that out. I had a little hand drill that I had to bloom. That's going the wrong way. Okay. <laughs> right, there we go. That's a bit more like it. No, you did a good job. It's just that the hole wasn't quite big enough. Sand well, it probably filled yeah. up with sand and stuff as well. Yeah, that's probably most of it. Actually, it's Right, so we pull those through like that. And so what we need to do now is screw this down. And I think I'm gonna do that off camera. It'll only take a second. Let me just whack these screws in to hold this down and then we'll come back and, and finish this off. <laughs> uh, so I wasn't gonna film this, but yeah. Uh, so what we've got to do is attach the base to the base. Um, so keep those wires threaded through there. So what I've got here, these are things, these are just the standoffs that I use. So it's just a piece of wood with a screw through it. And the point means it's not, uh, you know, it's a small point of contact, so it doesn't get in the way. Because what we've got to do, and this is where you're gonna see how good your terrain making is. We've got to turn this upside down, like that. And everything falls off. And everything falls off. Um, right, so. That like that, put one under there like that, and one under there like that, and one under there like that, and that holds it up, you see. And now we can maneuver this into place, which is a lot easier doing it like this than it is doing it any other way. So about like that, then we try and find the screws. Um, you know what? Good no, it's fine. It's just, I, I think I'll put them back in the box. Oh, come here. That's way too many. Perfect. Um, screwdriver. Screwdriver. There it is. It's not the right screwdriver, but it is a screwdriver. <laughs> Oh well, it's because these are posy and this isn't, but it'll do. So, what I've got to do is I don't want to. I don't want to put too much pressure on it. Right, that's that one. Uh, So the nice thing is this wood is actually, because you you're screwing into the end grain of the wood, it actually goes in quite easy and it doesn't need a lot to hold it. It's just- Yeah, the, see, it's, I, I knew that. It's just to hold it in place. So- I knew that, that's why I did it with wood. Totally. Yeah. All right, and then this one, which I, for some reason is a little bit narrower than the others, but it's fine. I don't think that's going to go in there. Right, we we just use three. That's fine. Right. Well, it's like I say, it's only to hold it in place, and it's not like this thing weighs anything. Right. So what fell off? Oh, not a lot. A few little bits. That's all right. There you go. You see. So now we can wire the thing onto it. Okay. So strip that. Strip that. Oh, get rid of that. You've done a really good job on this base, by the way. I didn't tell you. It's um, I like this. You've done a good job on that. 
Wow. It's um, I like your uh, use of different materials and the texture, the layering, and all that kind of stuff. Like the fact that you've done bits of green and the sand, and then the little gravelly bits on top, and all that. It's very good. Mm. Um, I also like the fact you managed to get 10 millimeter static grass on without using a static grass applicator. Yes, sounds smart. Yeah. Um, it's not that hard. You just grab it and stick it on and throw a load of glue at it. Yeah, that's true. Uh, so, ah, yes, now we have the oh, pièce de résistance. So here's our little beastie. Um, that she's made and uh, so that needs to go face that way but anyway we need to do the wires first uh, so let's just pop him there for a second stay and what we're gonna do it's shrink wrap plastic no it's shrink wrap Right. That's it's a bit big, isn't it? Well, it's shrink wrap. It shrinks. That's why it's called shrink wrap. <laughs> Clues in the name, I'd have thought. <laughs> you, it shrinks and wraps things. Wow. Yeah, I know. Clever, that, isn't it? Yeah. Never would have thought. Who'd have thunk it, eh? Right, now. Uh, so... Why is it going to be a bit visible? No, they're not, because I'm going to tuck them into the base. Ah, I see. Yeah, clever that, isn't it? Yeah. Oddly enough, I did think of that. <laughs> did you? Yeah. Um, where are my glasses? Hmm. There they are. Buried under all that. Right, so... Yeah, that's the disemboweled carcass of the whale. Let me see. Well, it's now in the fury over there. All right. Well, Marmite. No. Oh. Although that's probably not as disgusting as Marmite. Marmite's not disgusting. Marmite is vile. Marmite's great. No, it isn't. No, it really it's isn't. Smoking, it's smoking. It's meant to. Marmite is evil and should be no. banned. No, it's... Why is Marmite evil? Because it's butt scrapings from the last leper in hell. Mm. Fight me in the comments, I dare you. I like Marmite. Yeah, I know you like Marmite. Mother likes Marmite. Yeah, I know. The bird likes Marmite. Yeah, well, that's because he's a bird and he eats anything. I saw this great thing the other day. You'd like this. A kid got suspended from school because his teacher insisted that all birds were vegetarians. And uh, when he corrected her, um, she gave him a detention. And when he basically proved, like got his phone out and said, look, what about vultures and eagles and all these other things that eat? And so she dragged him off to the headmaster and he got suspended. And it wasn't for um, being right, it was for contradicting the teacher. And I just thought, I'm glad you don't go to that school because there would have been words had <laughs> if you came home and told me you've been suspended for correcting a teacher. Um, yeah, there would be issues. Um, anyway, so what we need to do now is not fall over, not fall over that. Birds aren't vegetarians, though. No, they're not. But that's the thing, is this teacher... Our parrot eats meat. I know, he does. He Our loves... parrot loves meat. He he lo chickens. I know, he loves a bit of chicken. Um, but this... A snail eats meat. Well, yeah, I know. But it was more the fact that, that like they said, it wasn't so much the fact that the uh, the kid was wrong. It was the fact that um, he had corrected, con had contradicted the teacher in front of the class and made her look stupid. And it's like, well, then maybe she shouldn't be stupid. Just a thought. Anyway, 
I don't know if I'm making coal as well. <laughs> anyway, so what I'm doing now is I'm just going to do this, this uh, shrink wrap tubing with uh, this little hot air gun here. We're shrinking. Well, that's the point of it. That's why it's called shrink wrap. As I said before, the clue's in the name. How does it do that? Oh, it's just a thermoplastic that reacts to heat by shrinking. But why? Well, you'll have to ask your chemistry teacher, won't you? Tell him you've discovered a sudden interest in um, thermoplastics <laughs> after watching some shrink wrap, shrinking and wrapping. Right, let's try and turn I'll this. I'll do that's why. Well. Although, then again, my chemistry teacher was the one that said it was aerates. Oh, instead of aerates. Yeah, all right, don't ask your chemistry <laughs> teacher. Aerates. We shouldn't, we shouldn't mock you. Oh, right, let's just turn those off. We shouldn't mock your um, chemistry teacher. She's probably very good at chemistry, just not very good at English, apparently. But anyway, area eight. I'm pretty sure he's a physics teacher anyway. Um, right, so now, this is going to be the fun bit, because uh, what I've got to do is threadle these wires. Threadle? Yes, threadle. Threadle? Yes, threadle these wires down into threadle. here. But I need to do them like one after the other because I don't know if they'll both go through at the same time. Yes, they will. Oh. A bit faster. Get in there. And this is why I made the hole a little bit big, you see. There we go. Right, that one's in. And we need to get this one in. Just talk about cells for a minute. Probably could have cut about a foot off this wire. Um, okay, you should have thought of that. Yeah, well, it's like I said, worst case, I can always take the take the thing back off. It's just that it's I, it's going to be a lot easier to do it like this than it is trying to screw the base on with this attached. So there we go. It's fine, you see. Hmm. Like a glove. Right, and then that should go like that. And we'll need to put some glue on his feet to hold him in place. Why do you say hey? Well, it. I'll just... whatever. Right, I'm just going to lay that down for a second because... You I'm don't stand up. Well, to be fair, those studs could have done with being a little touch longer, but I, I don't yeah, know. I know that. It'll be alright, doesn't matter. I always do that, make them too short. Right, now the question is, is there any of this super glue left in here as it's dried solid? Yes. Right. Oh no, there's loads in this, right, right. I'll put a bit on his foot there and a bit on this. Like that. And then we will try. Oh, where are the tweezers gone? that wire has just been slightly annoying. Right. It's all full apart. No, it'll be fine. Alright, I'm just going to hold this for a minute while the glue dries. Because the real question is, does it actually work? Oh, it does. Oh, it does work. <laughs> right. Um, okay, I think we can wrap this up. Good job, child. Well done. And here is our finished article. You did a good job on this, child. Well done. <laughs> yes, she has done a very good job on this. Uh, I hope you've all enjoyed this uh, little foray. It was more about what she did than what I did, but there you go. Uh, once again, I'd like to thank my top tier patrons, Howard and Amy, for their continued support, and indeed all of my patrons. Much appreciated. And uh, if you want to, you're more than welcome to come and join us on Patreon. And indeed, you're welcome to come and join us in the staff canteen on Facebook. But uh, yeah, hopefully you've enjoyed this little video and uh, we'll look forward to seeing you on the next one. Say goodbye, Katie. Goodbye, Katie. Anyway, <laughs> see you on the next one. Cheers. Bye. <laughs>